I am here to meet Dr. George Capio, who, with his two other partners, founded Shepherd's Hospital. The hospital has a chain of eight other hospitals throughout the country. And guess what? They are in their 30s. Let that sink in. This is Founders Connect Africa. Let's find out their journey. Hi, how are you? How are you? I'm fine. Very well. Welcome to Shepherd's Hospital. Mm -hmm. How can I help you? Um, I have an appointment with uh, Dr. George Capio. Yes. Okay. Hi. Hi, Dr. George. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? Very well. All right. Good to see you. Karibu sana. Welcome to Shepherd's Hospital. Yeah. Thank right. you so much, thank you so much. How are you doing? Um, uh, this looks very beautiful. Oh, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Well, we try to create a conducive environment for patients whenever they come in. Mm -hmm. So they get a very nice, quiet place that they quiet can place. be seen and I guess they get better after that. Yeah. Yes. Nice, nice. So maybe you can show me around? Oh yeah, of yeah. course. Let me show you. Well, um... Yeah, this is, this is our charge room. Uh-huh. Yeah, say hello to Anas. Hi, Anas. Yeah. All right. Pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah, we have uh, consultation rooms around. Yeah. We have the pediatrician's room, yeah. the gynecologist's room, yeah. and uh, also the dietary or macho. That's your macho. Oh. Yeah, that's where they sit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And this is where the dentist uh, so operates. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> when you look around, you'll see. Oh, I hear this machine is Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then here we have our audiology room. Mm -hmm. Audiology services are uh, for hearing. Oh, for hearing. Yeah, we have a procedure room where we do, we do minor surgical procedures. Mm -hmm. And then as you go in that side, that's where we have our theater wow. for our daycare center uh, services. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you ever want to be a doctor when you were growing up? Is it something that was in your head? Well, I've always had a heart to help people. I think from uh, childhood I knew that that's where my journey was going to look mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so when, uh, well, things came to, to pass, then I found myself here. And I think that dream now has come to pass. Wow, that's interesting. I'd, yes. I'd like to hear more. So probably we could um, sit down and probably have, have water and talk about it. <laughs> and yeah, listen yeah. to your Drinking journey. Drinking healthy, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go. All right, thanks. All right, thank you. Yeah, so tell us about your journey. Um, you've now decided that you want to be a doctor and you have been uh, accepted to school. And then now, how did it go about that we are here now? All right, uh, maybe if I take you back, this journey started way back in high school. Um, I was at the Alliance High School back in the day. And uh, we had some, you know, sanatorium there that we used to volunteer to go and work in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, if we move it forward then to uh, school and joint university medical school and then after that after you've done it school you definitely go for internship so by internship that's when I think you know much of this need started showing and becoming more obvious to me that uh, you know the government does it the much it can to provide medical care but this the needs are still you know more than what they can provide and that's how then in my mind I was thinking how else can we do more to offer quality services to people who really, really need it. And uh, that's where uh, I think I met uh, Dr. Kimei. Uh, Dr. Soi, who's also one of our partners, was uh, in school with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's how this journey began, and that's uh, mm -hmm. where we are now. Okay, so you have um, three partners. Yes, yes, yes. Actually, the, fo the founder of uh, the founder uh, partner is Dr. Kimei. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2013 is when uh, we started Shepherd's Hospital. Yeah, uh, of our time we've joined him along the way, and then now here we are now uh, doing much of the expansion work that we're doing. Okay, um, so Shepherd's started in 2013. How many um, hospitals do you have in the country? We currently have eight centers. Uh, yes, it's been an interesting journey yeah. <laughs> of faith and, you know, of course, hard work yeah. and trust. Uh, we currently have eight uh, branches, one uh, uh, in Kakuma, uh, in Lodwa, in Mawameru. We have uh, two in Narok. Actually, the, the, the initial clinic was set up in Narok. Mm -hmm. 
and now it's growing into a 100 bed uh, level five facility. Yeah, and then now in the last uh, one year, we've also come into Nairobi. Mm -hmm. uh, we opened our uh, first clinic in Nairobi that is in Embakasi pipeline. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's been going on and seeing so many people uh, and serving them well. I believe those who have visited us can attest to the quality service. Mm -hmm. um, and then now uh, we opened uh, Steamer Plaza Annex, this is in Parklands. Yeah. And we're currently also uh, setting up uh, at Nyayo Estate wow. in Embakasi. Wow, eight yes. hospitals. How yes, many eh? How old are you? <laughs> are you team members? Well, they're not about to retire, let me just say that. <laughs> in your we, we are just in the mid 30s. Mid 30s? Yeah, mid 30s. And you have eight hospitals to your name. Wow. Yes, 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 yes. Interesting. Yes. How has the journey been? Um, in fact, what I'm looking at is the starting point. Yes. It, it must have been um, crazy. Um, and, and, and the growth in like such a short time mm -hmm. um, must have been a crazy journey. Maybe you could tell us um, what you experienced. Well, as, in, as a young man trying to go into entrepreneurship, especially uh, medical, the medical world, mm -hmm. um, it's not uh, something that you would say is easy. I wouldn't say it's hard as well. I think the level of uh, commitment and passion that we put into it makes it all worth the while. Uh, because what we really, really, really uh, are passionate about is delivering the quality to, to those who need it. Yeah, so once we decided that that's what we want to offer, and uh, as you see around, what uh, we are trying to set up is, you know, uh, state-of-the-art facilities that, uh, you know, uh, not only appeal to our clients, but also have equi well, uh, well equipped and and staffed with uh, those who are well qualified to offer the service. Mm -hmm. So the journey has been interesting. At the beginning, uh, I must say, we had to make some really, really heavy sacrifices, mm -hmm. um, uh, especially when it comes to, you know, uh, you know, the investment itself, yeah. setting up, and most of the times we were constructing, and uh, buying materials, and buying machinery, training our staff especially. Yeah. We've invested very heavily in the core elements of uh, provision of quality services mm -hmm. yeah so that's one thing we can say yes it's been heavy in terms of our, our time and investment financially but it's worth the while when you talk about investment how much are we talking about <laughs> <laughs> let me just it's, it's it's almost like breaking you have, you have to break the bank let me just tell you that <laughs> you have to break the bank uh -huh. uh, but whenever you're offering quality you know there's no there's no compromise, compromise. Mm -hmm. you know you you give the level of best that you can without any compromise because we really, really want uh, our clients to get the best yeah. out of uh, the Shepherd's Hospital. You mentioned to you in Kakuma, Maua, you've also talked about uh, Narok. Yes. Um, I see these places as places that I would not think about when I'm probably starting out a business. Mm -hmm. um, but why did you choose these mm -hmm. specific places to um, open the branches? I think it's just uh, what we say are values, you know, the need. Um, when you look at the whole demographic uh, setup of the country in terms of medical provision, the areas where we are not uh, well serviced are pretty obvious. I think if you mention uh, Turkana in anyone's mind, they think, wow, you know, there's, there's so much need, you know. So being that uh, Dr. Kemei is who he is and we are who we are, we thought that would be the best place to, you know, set up because definitely they need it more. And uh, they, of course, are those people who definitely need it at an affordable uh, rate. Mm -hmm. And that's part of our, our vision, to offer very good quality services at an affordable rate. Mm -hmm. That anyone from, you know, a low social economic level to someone who's of the highest mm -hmm. social economic level can come and get the same quality of service. How many people have you employed in all the eight centers so far? Currently, we employ over 100 uh, employees. Mm -hmm. We uh, partner also with uh, about above 30, more than 30 specialists mm -hmm. around our centers. Yeah, so we're talking a, a good number of uh, medical practitioners operating within our centers, mm -hmm. which therefore means that if, whenever you walk into any of our facilities, then you can you can access, you know, the same services you'd get anywhere uh, at a very affordable rate. Mm -hmm. yes. So let us head to uh, Narok to see this big um, hospital that, uh, that you guys have built.
Welcome to Shepherd's Narok. Yeah, Karibu Sana. Yeah. So this is our. Yeah, yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you enjoyed your drive. Karibu. Thank you. Karibu Sana. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. I like actually the sandwich was Shepherd's, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, like I told you, we're coming for a trip, yeah. and we're going to meet our founder and CEO, yes, yes. Dr. Dan Kemei. Oh, yes, Kemei. yes. Kemei. 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 Thank you so much for having <laughs> us. Today. Karibu sana. Yes, we came all the way to see this um, hospital. Karibu. Have you had a good trip? Yes, we had. Yes. Yeah. So, Dr. Kimei, thank you so much for having us here in Narok. It was a three-hour journey, actually. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a trip, baby. Yeah, thank you so much. And this is a lot that you guys are doing. It's very impressive, uh, considering that you're in your thirties. Um, has medicine been one of the things that you've always wanted to do? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, ever since I was in school, um, I grew up in a family that uh, studied medicine. And it's something that we grew up with, so I, I fell into it naturally. Okay. All right. So now we have this capacity. We were told that um, uh, you're planning to have a 100-bed capacity here yes. in this facility. How much is the investment for this facility? Okay. Um, the investment is phased. Um, it's a big project, so we had to phase it. So to get to the 100 beds, we had to break it up. So right now we're just finishing the first phase, which is about 40 beds. And then now the second phase is where we will complete the, the 100 beds. So the first phase is, is taken up quite a bit, a bit more than we thought. It's almost, almost 40 million so far. So the second phase we expect to have to spend to bring in the total investment to about 70. 70. Yeah. That's almost over 100 million. Yeah, by the time we complete the entire project, yeah. including the other things that we need to do past the 100 beds, we're, we're looking at well over 100. Yes. Um, how did you finance this project? I know that you're probably three partners. Um, how are you able to finance a hundred million? Uh, West, West. It's in phases. Yeah, it's in phases. Yeah. But uh, mostly so far, uh, it's uh, plowing back a lot of our, our, our savings and our profits uh, and a lot of loans. It's, uh, we've had to work with the banks very closely mm -hmm. to, to finance us. And then uh, a bit of supplier credit also. Yes. Okay. Um, so you have eight hospitals so far. Um, a lot of inpatient. This is the only facility yes. that has an outpatient. Mm -hmm. What are the plans for the future for um, Shepherd? Mm, okay. So I'm saying our big plan was we. This was our flagship project. So this has really taken up a lot of our resources. But the great plan after this was to form as a template for what we're working on. So we intend to roll out across the country because. Uh, the services that we offer are needed in most of the places where we are and we and other places that we are not uh, at the moment so we we do want to do similar or, or larger where everywhere that we are which places uh, we're all over the country so we're in Nairobi we're in Meru we're in Turkana uh, we're in Narok uh, so those are the places those are the immediate uh, plans that we have and then the other places in the country we've already identified that could uh, be a potential for what we offer. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so um, seeing that it has been a lot of plowing back your investments, plowing back your investments, have you ever um, taken yourself out with um, some of the investments you've gotten? Have you broken even? Uh, what, what has been the, 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 the journey? Um, yeah, the journey has been very tough. It's been very tough because you. Uh, we call it, you make, you take a step forward, uh, sometimes you take two steps forward and you take a step back. Uh, we, we're always moving forward, but you don't move as fast as you want to because uh, when you invest, you have to, you, you know, you, you, things don't go as you plan. Maybe you're thinking next month we'll have this much money and then it doesn't come through or a machine breaks and you have to fix it or something is stolen. So there's always those setbacks. So we, we, we work with those challenges, uh, we work with those challenges and and we, we never really look at breaking even. We always look at what's the next thing we can do. Because uh, we, we're not at the point yet to where we want to start taking money out of the business and, and, and enjoying ourselves. We, we are still at the point of growing it. Yeah. So we, we never really look at break even uh, in, the, in, the, in the aspect of making profit. We look at it in the aspect of continuing 
continuing to reinvest. Business continues, yes. Wow. So delayed gratification, yes. It, it is. It, we we feel much better when we see a project moving mm -hmm. than uh, than seeing cash in our hands. Mm. Yeah. How long will be the delayed gratification? Um, I think at some point we will not have an option. We will have to. <laughs> We will have to 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 gratify ourselves a bit, but uh, it's still still a bit of a way. Well, maybe another five years, maybe more. Yeah, and where do you see the brand in those five years? Mm -hmm. um, the big the big the big plan for us is to be a national brand. We 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 want to be nationally recognized, um, a household name, not just in Narok or in Nairobi, but all over the country. We'd like somebody in Malindi. If he sees us uh, there, knows this is this is our household. This, this is a brand that is uh, local to us. So that's that's what's important to us. Sure. Yeah. Because we've seen a lot of um, hospitals in the Kenyan market are not um, like wholly owned by um, the locals. Um, and in that, are you planning to sell a stake? Um, if you know those guys can call it, are you planning to sell a stake? Um, if, if we can hold them off as much as possible, if we can do it ourselves, we'll try. But uh, we, our, our goal is to the bigger vision. The bigger vision is to is to be able, to, uh, to provide the, uh, a good service everywhere. Uh, that's that's the bigger vision. So if we can find somebody who shares that with us, um, we would be very willing to work with them. The problem is some of the guys who come in and are willing to do it. They they are the ones who now want to start taking things out. Okay. Have you ever been approached? By... We have, we have, yeah. we have. But uh, we said we we are not ready for that yet. We still want to run it and make sure we we grow something that is very good for for ourselves and for everybody who needs who needs it. How many have come calling? Uh, not many, not many, not many. <laughs> just, just one or two. One or two. One or two. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, are there still opportunities in the medicine world? In in Kenya, considering um, yes, you you are you 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 enter into the market, but um, are there more opportunities in, the, in this space? There are many opportunities. Um, not you know not just in the traditional you set up a hospital, people come with their illnesses. There are the services that service the hospitals, uh, the industries that <clears throat> that work together with the hospitals. These are industries that are not so well developed, and there's big opportunities in that. Yes. What do you mean industries that are service hospitals, for example? Um, you know, when you think of a, ho as a hospital as, a, as an organization, as a, you know, it, it has marketing, it has finance, it has uh, engineering, you know, things have to be repaired, it has procurement. So all these services that feed into the hospital as a company and feed into healthcare all need um, other, other people to, you know, outsourcing, if you could call it that. Uh, it's important, yeah. Okay, if you'd go back and do this again, what is that one thing you would not do? Um, one of the biggest mistakes was um, when we were expanding. Um, sometimes there were places where we did not really do our research very well, uh, so we did not enter the market correctly. So that's one of the big problems we've had. Yeah. Yeah. So research is very important. Research, research is very yeah. important. Yeah. Um, your biggest lesson during um, this three-year uh, period? Mm -hmm. um, and the important thing is um, also pick very carefully who you work with. Uh, you know, you may partner with people and uh, you don't always share the same vision, you don't always have the same ideas. Uh, so it's important, to, very important to pick who you work with. Did you drop a few partners before? Yeah, I've had partners come, have partners go, so that's why I say it's very important to pick so that the journey becomes smoother yeah. when you work with people who you, you gel with better. Okay, all right. Um, so apart from uh, partnerships, what are the lessons um, would you give someone who is interested in um, entering mm -hmm. the medicine, the business of medicine? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's a very good... One of the most important things is is to treat uh, medicine as a business. The business of medicine is 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 like any other business. It has to be the numbers have to be respected. Uh, you have to not just uh, throw a, um, a product at the market without being sure if the market needs it or in what form they need it. Uh, so stuff like that. Treating medicine as a business is very important. All right, so now you had to uh, back to um, the story for this um, 40 bed capacity. Maybe you can show me um, where this um, this 
institution is going to be at. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, hi. Oh, you're the other person now. This is Ken. This yeah. Is Ken. Oh, yeah. Pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure. Pleasure. Pleasure to meet you. Yes, yes. Nice to meet you. Karibuni yeah. sana. We came to see the good work you guys are doing here. Yeah. Thank yes. you. You're, you're very welcome. Yeah. So thank you so much. You're welcome. That was a lovely visit. Yeah. I wish you guys all the best. Thank you. I should come for the opening of the book. Sure, you're very much welcome. All right. Yeah, hope uh -huh. to see you soon. Yes, yes. Yeah. Have so a good I, I have to run back to work. Okay. But have a safe trip back to Nairobi. Back. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. First, I just think they've done a phenomenal job uh, getting to the place where they have eight outlets and uh, I saw pictures of the hospitals they're putting up and, you know, phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. Uh, when it comes to expansion, just some of the key things to think about is, um, you know, as you build a business, you kind of build a certain science towards where the demand is for your product or service. So, like, for them, They've probably stumbled upon certain locations where they were underserved and did not have, you know, a facility like that. So when they put it in place, it flourishes. But maybe there are other places where they put it in place and it doesn't succeed as well. So what you do as, you know, business owners is to begin to ask yourself, what are the factors that uh, contribute towards the success of us having, say, a clinic or a hospital and it succeeds? Is it the population? Is it the location? Is it... Um, you know, like uh, I could I could use other examples. Like if you look at uh, you know the retail outlets, uh, for example, uh, the defunct Nakumat, they used to always be in a junction between a, a residential and commercial area. Uh, so you can always come up with that kind of uh, formula that if we're in a location that has X population, then it's probably suitable for for us to put a branch. So they really need to codify what are, what are those factors of success. Uh, and then once that's in place, they go and start looking what other locations in the country or even in the continent have similar uh, you know, success drivers. Um, so many things to look at. Some people, it's, uh, it's usually the demographic, uh, what, what's the earning capacity of the people there. Uh, is there something that makes people particularly vulnerable to needing those kinds of services? So there are different things you probably look at and probably you get those from looking at your most successful outlets and then seeing what is it that contributes to this success. But that said, expansion is a very expensive venture. Expanding business on your own money means that either you grow very slowly or you spend a very long time in that blood, sweat and tears, uh, you know, uh, valley of death <laughs> um, and uh, so to expand you'd need capital uh, and doing it on the basis of debt capital is usually expensive the best would be to get investors who maybe are in the healthcare industry um, Sometimes, you know, when you get uh, somebody who's in the same industry, they come in with systems and processes that can help to boost your brand. But one of the main things they should be looking at now is building the brand of the Shepherd's Hospitals. And so that when people recognize that this hospital has a certain quality level, whatever, wherever they set up one, it will attract the kind of people that they are looking forward to working with. And so when it comes to attracting investors, most of the time you look at uh, several factors. Uh, one, beyond money, what value are they going to bring in? Are they in our industry? Are they going to bring in technology? Are they going to bring in expertise, maybe from elsewhere? Um, are they going to help us acquire equipment which they know how to you know, use? Uh, will they bring in strategy? Will they bring in business? Maybe they are connected to a larger you know, corporate unit or something that would bring about that business. So you always have to 
look beyond the money. Money is not the answer to all you know, problems. Uh, so there's a money bit, there's what value are they going to add, there's uh, uh, questions like do they buy into your strategy and, and vision as well um, and are they able to add value to it because you know maybe they want to go into East African region and the investor is somebody who already runs operations on an East Africa or maybe even Pan-African or even global scale. And so they'll be able to bring in the connections that help them open up in those places. Um, and then we discount this a lot, but chemistry is also important. Uh, do you get along with a partner? Do you share the same values? Are you comfortable with each other? Are you comfortable with how you work together? So beyond them doing a due diligence on the hospital owners, the hospital owners also have to do a due diligence on the partners. Because there have been so many stories, especially in the healthcare industry here, of, you know, uh, investors who came in and because they were looking for quick returns ended up expanding too fast or putting pressure or reducing standards or you know just changing the whole nature of how things are happening so they need to get people who really get them and can grow together and add value to uh, that uh, strategy that they have.